As you're ready, allowing your eyes to be closed, finding a posture that's upright, relaxed. <coughs> Releasing any unnecessary tension the body may be holding. Softening the brow, jaw. Breathing in, feel the sensations that the breath creates. Breathing out, try to soften your belly. And begin by bringing to mind somebody that you think is pretty happy, that you think has experienced some of these levels of happiness, sensual, material, blameless, debtless. Somebody that you know that has done their, their work their meditation practice, their awakening, their service. Someone who has seemed to have earned a sense of well-being in their life. Now, we don't have to find perfect examples. Everybody's mixed. Somebody that seems to have quite a bit of these qualities of happiness, of joy, of ease and contentment, well earned through their own efforts. Connecting with this person and extending the simple phrase, the wish, may your happiness continue and increase. May you experience success, spiritual success, Freedom, may you experience true happiness. We're trying to incline our hearts to develop a feeling of appreciating, of celebrating, of taking pleasure in the happiness of others. First picking someone who is the easiest person you can think of. May your happiness continue and increase even if this person's no longer alive in body, still just wishing for their well-being. 
celebrating the goodness that they experienced and did while they were here. A sense of gratitude, a feeling of connection and appreciation. Start to reflect on some of the other people that you think are happy. Well-earned happiness. Broadening the field of appreciation. Training the heart. Even if there's a part of you that sometimes feels jealous or envious. Replace those unskillful emotions that we suffer about with this intention towards appreciation. May your happiness continue and increase. May I learn to enjoy, to take pleasure in your happiness. Sensual, material, debtless, blameless. The happiness of recovering, of awakening, of healing.
bringing this intention right here into the room, into the present, connecting with the people sitting next to you. These fellow meditators earning their happiness through their own efforts, doing their practice. Offering them these phrases, may your happiness continue and increase. May you be successful. May you enjoy the appropriate pleasures, material success. May you conduct your life in a way that frees you from debt. May you be blameless in the eyes of the wise. Send it to the people in front of you and behind you and get a sense of this whole sangha, this community. The combined joy, happiness, the effort. This group of people seeking freedom, willing to train their hearts and their minds practicing renunciation on whatever levels, developing wisdom, and extending your empathetic heart to their happiness. May it continue, may it increase, allowing yourself to take pleasure and being part of this wise group of people.
Now the more difficult task, which is to bring to mind somebody who's difficult. Now, don't go to the most difficult people or the people who are clearly completely confused, but pick someone who's mixed, someone who's done some good, earned some happiness, but also has been confused or unskillful in some ways. Somebody maybe you feel a bit jealous of, envious of their successes. Start training the heart to appreciate rather than suffer at. Even if you don't mean it yet, saying in our mind over and over, may you be happy. May your happiness, your success, your well-being continue and increase. Remember that you do this practice so that you don't have to suffer anymore. To free yourself from the jealousy, the envy, the coveting, the self-centered fear. Let go. Train your mind, your heart, to appreciate the happiness and success of others. The most traditional way, the earliest form of this practice is to extend appreciation in the four directions, to so the east and west, north and south, until we uncover the whole world with this heart of appreciation, sympathetic joy, empathetic gratitude.
so much beauty on this happen on this planet so much happiness being experienced material sensual debtlessness blamelessness so many beings speaking the truth acting in integrity being of service helping each other we're just focusing on the positive right now think of all the things you are grateful for on this planet all of the things you appreciate about existence The sense pleasures, the material things, the music, the art. The people, the places. As we, as a group, develop appreciation, I'd like to call for some group participation where you can begin saying out loud loud enough for us to hear you some of the things that come to mind that you appreciate and together we will celebrate send appreciative joy important things like punk rock The Redwoods. Ninety three hip hop. It can be people, it can be places, it can be your favorite chocolate. Harley Davidson. The Buddha, the ocean. Converse, <laughs> mm. calcium main system, oh, cheeseburgers, <laughs> toilet, <laughs> you too. Allow yourself to smile, to take pleasure in the happening things that bring each other happiness. Sanders. Cheese steaks. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> 
All of the things that you're grateful for, that you appreciate. Extending this out in all directions. Imagining the long list of things that people appreciate on this planet. Those near and far away. The love, the laughter, the connection. The spiritual practices, the kindness, the service, the generosity being practiced. Inclining the mind, the heart, towards appreciation for everything that's good, wholesome, wise loving sex even sex it's okay to love it to appreciate it Letting go of the phrases, the reflection. Just come back to mindfulness in your body here. Breathe in and out of your heart center. Soften your belly. Whether or not you are able to fully connect with the practice, let the last couple of minutes just be the practice of self-acceptance. Right now, your mind is like this, your heart, your body. Let go of the judgments, the ideas of how it should be. Relax into how it is, pleasant or unpleasant, joyous or difficult. Right now it's like this. Before jumping right into the discussion, <clears throat> it's a good idea to take a minute and reflect on how you are able to connect with that kind of practice. It gives us a lot of information about our 
minds and our mood today, this evening. Sometimes it gives us a lot of information about the work that we have to do, how easy it is to judge and, and compare and feel jealous and how hard it is to appreciate, to really connect with other people and get out of our self-centeredness. One of my favorite parts of that uh, Year to Live practice that it's based on a book that my, my father wrote called A Year to Live. And um, I did it the first time many years ago. Um, and at that point when I did it, I had made a lot of amends and done a lot of forgiveness practice because of my recovery. And I I'd, I'd tried to clean up the kind of wreckage of my past and I, I'd done a lot of work at that point when I did that practice but there was a whole nother angle to it that I hadn't done which was directly uh, making uh, appointments with people and writing letters and developing this meditation in, in my heart of appreciation I'd focused so much on the harm I had caused I hadn't focused much on the appreciation that I had and the gratitude that I had and all of the people that had been kind and supportive and generous and inspiring to me. And so, you know, compassion, Buddhism, we talk so much about compassion because there's so much pain to meet with compassion. And usually when we come to practice, we're coming out of some suffering, most people. And so there's a lot of compassion, a lot of forgiveness. But this other side of the coin, which is appreciation and developing joy and developing. And really, like when you think about this, you want to be happy, right? <laughs> and, we, and we're wired to be sort of self-centered and we want to be happy. And so we're always kind of going around thinking like, what will make me happy? What can I do? What can I get? What can I experience? What can I meditate on to make me happy but this practice is like opening the door to like i could take i could become happy about your happiness i don't have to always be worried about con creating my own happiness i could get a hit off of yours and a hit off of yours and a hit off of yours and be like wow there's all of these other people who are experiencing happiness and if i can empathize with that I have all these more options, not just for like what I'm doing, but what are you doing? Checking other people out and being like, whoa, I'm, you look happy. You seem happy. You, let me get a hit of that. Let me respond to that with some appreciation. Really opens the door, you know, if there's uh, almost 8 billion people on this planet. How many of them at every moment are feeling some form of skillful, well-earned happiness. Even if it's only a small percentage of 8 billion, there's a lot of joy going on in every second that we forget about. Don't you forget about it? I usually think about it. So, you know, we're balancing the uh, appreciation is always in this form, is always in conjunction with Compassion is the appropriate response to suffering. Non-attached appreciation is the appropriate response to your own pleasure. Don't cling to it. You'll ruin it. <laughs> learn, to, learn to let go. Non-attached appreciation. And appreciative joy, empathetic towards other people's skillful, well-earned, wholesome happiness. And then both of them balanced by loving kindness, may all beings be at ease, and equanimity, which is probably where we'll go next week, I believe, uh, which is the understanding that no matter how much you appreciate other people's happiness, no matter how much compassion we have for 
suffering in this world. Everyone has their own karma, and you can't meditate anybody into happiness. You can pray your ass off. You can meditate your ass off for other people to be happy, and it will not work, I guarantee you. <laughs> Everyone has to do the work themselves, but it'll make you a more friendly, happy, appreciative, lighthearted, open-minded person, and you will suffer less and less. But everyone else still has to do their own work. <laughs> Please, Ron. And my, 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 my with a new mindfulness practice, I was paying attention regarding happiness. And I observed, I have yet to see a person in my life. I, the people I see around me, they're trying to buy happiness. I don't know of anybody my my first thought is like maybe we should lower the bar a little bit um for you know people being perfect and yeah people are trying to buy happiness but you're around meditators all of the time you've been meditating for a long time and so you you know you're in this room of people like nobody's here trying to buy happiness tonight everybody's here saying I'm going to train my mind. I'm going to meditate. This I'm not, you know, this isn't about no no donation, no, no none of that stuff that you give is going to do anything to make you happy. I mean, generosity is a different conversation, but we're here trying to earn our happiness. You've been on retreats, you've been, you know, that's an easy one. For me, I look at people who are doing service work, doing meditation practice, doing it's not looking for a material solution, but looking for a spiritual one, looking for an internal and awakening experience. Uh, and there's millions of people on the planet doing it. Is anybody perfectly enlightened? They don't say, I don't know, maybe there's rumored to be. It's usually after they die, then they're like, oh yeah, that guy was fully enlightened. <laughs> Yeah. I hope you went to Alan's shop. Yes. Course, the advertisement, it's on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to pay. Good deal. That's a, that's a good deal. That was a good deal. It's a good deal. Yeah. That's the cheapest hot fudge sundae in town. Well, of course, you know, our sense, we, our sense pleasures, our you know, material and sense pleasure happinesses, those low, low levels of happiness that we're all, you know, um, yeah, they cost something. There's an energetic exchange that we call money. And, you know, for, usually for material things or, or food, sense pleasures, there's some exchange of that. Um, but the happiness of debtlessness, or of blamelessness, or of your meditative practice that you've been putting all of this effort into, costs you nothing. I find in this country to be debtless is a liability. You probably are right. You, you know more about that than I do. What good is making a dollar? Yeah. So you got to pay 40 cents to the government. That's right. So that is a ridiculous habit. So what do you do? You keep yourself in debt? No, to keep debt. Yeah, keep debt. No, no, keep debt. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a legal system. It's a legal system. Keep, keep it in there so that you're not, because as soon as you cash it out, you got to pay the taxes. So just keep it in there. So why be not, uh, why not have no debt? Right. Yeah. Again, 2,600 years ago, I don't know what the taxation situation was um, with the kings and the kingdoms and all of that stuff. I think that the debtlessness is the forgiveness that's more important than the financial debtlessness. You know, Lou, stay with me for a second. Yeah. I genuinely believe 2,500 years ago, there must have been about five to ten intellectuals <laughs> sent in a room and decided to talk about Buddhist teaching that the mankind can never achieve that. And they, they wrote this sutra, and we are struggling for 25. Okay. This is my assumption. Yeah. 2,500 years ago, yeah. there was no right, there was no printing, there was no, there didn't even any, no movies. Nobody has substantiated that this man was alive. 
That's not true. He, the scholars have substantiated, but let's let go of that. Let's come to your direct experience. You've been meditating for 20 years? How long? 30? 40? 25. 25 years. Has it worked a little bit? But I'm still craving and clinging. Okay, so it hasn't worked. <laughs> hasn't worked perfectly. Me too. I'm still craving and clinging. <laughs> hasn't worked perfectly. <laughs> 25 years. Tell me one person you know who doesn't want to buy happiness. Well, I think I know lots of people. And I think that even you, I think that you're conflating living in a... Um, materialist society and a capitalist society with you know having the ice cream spending seven dollars on it which is nothing to you and your ability right so but yes of course you you know you wanted to have that pleasure and you were able to have that pleasure and you had it and it was a temporary pleasure we had to pay 45 days for the house. yes and so there might have been a <laughs> then, then you you but I, actually, I just I want to come back because you you go you go here quite a bit, Ron. Into um, if there's no perfectly enlightened, totally happy people, then I feel like you sort of dismiss all of the progress that you have made in 25 years and how you've decreased suffering. So you you've heard me say this. There's that guy that wrote the book 10% happier, right? You guys know you know about this. There's like a Dan Harris, 10% happier. He said, he said, I'm a pretty happy person. I'm successful. I'm rich American, you know, like, and I, I thought, you know, what's all this meditation shit? What if I, could I increase my happiness by 10%? No, I think happiness is a moment to moment. Thing. Of course it is. Of course it's, everything's moment to moment. But the more you train your mind to not cling, to let go, to be present, to be appreciative, to be compassionate, the more you're able to string moments of happiness together and live a pretty <coughs> satisfied life with a skillful response. I know you've made progress, and I know you're skeptical about perfection. I think it's fine to be skeptical about perfection. I know from my own direct experience that my decreasing, my suffering, my unhappiness has decreased so much and my happiness has increased so much from where I started 30 years ago. And I was starting at a lower place than you were. Like you were like kind of a healthy, well-adjusted adult and you started meditating. I don't know. They're all people. Oh, but you know, for me, like coming from addiction and incarceration and self-hatred and suicidal ideation, all of this stuff, like meditation saved my life. And, you know, and got me to this place of like functioning, you know, fairly healthy, kind, gender, like tr taught me to do all of this stuff I didn't know how to do. So for me, I'm like, I've got no doubt how well the Dharma works and for sure it leads to happiness, you know, in my own direct experience. Not perfect enlightened happiness, but pretty damn good. <laughs> Yeah, but I think that you're dismissing that you also have experienced a lot of that. You've been at it, you know, you keep coming back, you go to retreats, you've been doing it for 25 years. And I got to believe you've made a lot of progress. I you're just, it's just not perfect. I honestly believe people who do this work, they become more manipulative too. Sometimes, that's true. You're more aware of how the world is fucked up. Oh, yeah. And then you can start using like the spiritual <laughs> language to manipulate people. I, you see around? Yeah, I'm an empath. You know, you're tr you're triggering me right now. I, I don't know one dharma teacher. <laughs> I find that all these dharma institutions, at the end of the day, they want to make some money. Yeah, but what's wrong with that? Why are you judging that? What's I'm wrong with people making that. money? All I'm saying. What's is, wrong with it? I really believe this gift is so profound. Yeah. If a person genuinely believes in this gift, we believe that there is no craving, there is no clinging. Yeah. yeah. If, I'm um, if I receive something, it must be given freely. That is the ultimate joy of this work, I believe. Yeah. I've yet to see a Dharma teacher in that category. You need to hang out with the monks. <laughs> really, like for me, like I feel like I, I feel like. 
I can put some of my Dharma teachers in that category, but mostly they're the monastics mm -hmm. who are giving it freely and that there's no financial, it's all really given freely. When you're hanging out with people like me, lay people who are like, I got to pay the rent and we got the lease on the center. And, you know, then there is more of a financial of like, yeah, we got to pay for this shit. We don't know any but go to the monastery where there's nothing to pay for. The real faith of this work is to test yourself. Can I preach this gift and I will be rewarded lavishly? Yeah. That is an amazing work. Yeah. People I can, know, I think, I think I won. People know what uncertainty. Yeah. Well, you don't want uncertainty. Yeah, like this is why I can't do your job. Yeah. yeah we do like uncertainty. It's important to each other. What are you, what are you saying? That's for all the adventurers. That's for all the fun. Yes. Some people do, yeah. Yeah, if you want certainty, you won't be a Dharma teacher. You, I think what Alan's saying, like, because I relate to that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can pay the rent or not, but I kind of like that adventure. <laughs> I, I keep opening meditation centers without any money. I mean, like, well, let's see if we pay for it or not. This is sort of a cool adventure. But no, no Buddha took his brown robe, took a begging bowl, stood in front of a street, helped me eat. Yeah, but food or no food. Yeah, I can. It's profound. Yes. Maybe you should try it. Yeah. <laughs> then you, what do you think, Alan? Should we send him to the monastery for a little while? Yeah. Just go to the monastery for a month or two and I'm just... Enjoy my <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough. Um, any last other question, comment? We'll probably end there before Ron and I just dialogue the rest of the evening. I'm sorry. It's all right. I appreciate the questions, and I know they're coming from a real place. I'll end with this. What I try to remember to say, I don't always remember to say, which is uh, reflect on this. Reflect on your relationship to happiness, to other people's happiness. Check this out. Try this meditation. Try to put it in rotation. Wishing, may you be happy. May your happiness increase. When you find yourself experiencing jealousy or envy, try to replace those thoughts with these thoughts. See how it works. You can actually, I mean, this is the thing, like human beings are powerful. The mind left to its own device will be selfish and afraid and jealous and critical. <coughs> but what the Dharma gives us is a way to train our minds and to replace thoughts. And you can actually push ignorance out of your mind with wisdom, even if you don't mean it yet. And if you do that enough, 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 eventually you'll have a wise mind that's been trained to respond appropriately rather than the natural dysfunctional tendency of our human experience. This has been my experience and I, I offer it to you freely. Check it out for yourself. We have some announcements. Class is done by donation. The uh, way that we pay for this is uh, your donations. You can make <laughs> donations um, at the front desk over here, which is um, the, the encouraged month uh, uh, drop-in donation is 15 to $20. You can also do Venmo if you're at home watching and you want to make a Venmo donation. It's against the stream meditation on Venmo. Um, a whole bunch of people have, and, and we're hoping that a whole bunch more people will become monthly supporters. Uh, the, the rent on the uh, room is about $3,000 a month. We're bringing in about $2,000 a month, so we're, we're uh, living at a deficit. We can't even pay the rent yet, much less uh, pay some, some donations to me for my livelihood and uh, Ricky as our, our center manager. So we're still building, and we're doing that, and we'll do that with your help and your generosity, please. If you, if you feel moved and you feel that we're worthy recipients, please be generous. Um, there's a Four Foundations of Mindfulness day long here on Saturday, March 7th, which is in a couple weeks. Uh, you can sign up for that online, or you can just show up and register in person. I'm happy to do some scholarships. It's, I think it's 50. What, do we say, what are we charging for the day long? 50 bucks. 
If you can afford 50 bucks, pay for it. It helps us pay the rent. Uh, if you can't afford 50 bucks and you want to come meditate, we'll scholarship you. We're, you know, nobody's turned away for lack of funds. You just have to ask. Let us know. If you can pay it, fucking pay it. If you don't pay it, fucking come anyways. The Ajahn Chah lineage study and practice um, starts on March 22nd. It's four Sundays over a four-month period, March, April, May, June. So that also you can sign up on the website, against the stream.com. The Memorial Day retreat is open for registration. That's May 22nd through 25th, and that is in Joshua Tree. That's our annual Memorial Day, three nights uh, in the desert, silent meditation retreat. You can sign up for that now. If you're planning to come and you want a single room and not to have roommates or be in the dorm, you need to sign up early. The singles always sell out quickly. There's not that many of them. So register early. That's it. And then if you're watching at home uh, or if you know anybody in North Carolina, I'm going to be in North Carolina April 4th through 5th at Enlightened Yoga. So uh, if you have any folks in the South, send them down that way, North Carolina. Okay, this, is, this one's important. Next, is that next week? No, in two weeks. On Monday, March 16th, we're going to do a... Um, Chinese Buddhist tea ceremony here before class on Monday. We're going to start at 5 o'clock. Morgan DeMarks, who was the um, volunteer coordinator at the Old Against the Stream in Santa Monica, has been part of our Sangha for a really long time, managed retreats for us. She's become uh, very involved in this tea ceremony, and it's a meditative tea ceremony. She just spent a year in retreat in China learning this and has come back and is now offering uh, ceremonies. She was in Taiwan, I think. Um, only 10 people can come. She's very strict about this tea ceremony. Uh, some, we've done them before here where like 20 people came, but she's like, nope, 10, only 10. And she's going to start doing it monthly. Uh, or regularly, we're going to get her on the schedule. There's only a couple spots left. I think seven or eight people have signed up. So if you know you're really interested, you're going to be here uh, the 16th, come talk to Ricky. She'll put you on the list. Lastly, volunteers uh, to clean, to help us clean, to be of service. And this is a great way if you're uh, not able to, I mean, if you have money and you're giving and you still want to be of service, please do. It's great to be of service, to help us clean and, and be of service. But also for the people that don't have much money to donate and you have time and you can give us some be of service and uh, please come talk to Ricky and sign up for Monday afternoons. We're trying to get the place cleaned every Monday before class. So if you have time and energy and, and to come help us do some cleaning here, we don't have a cleaning crew. We're relying on the community to clean. So if you want a clean center, help us clean it. That was a lot of announcements. It's believed that there is a positive energy that we call merit that's developed through practicing and discussing the Buddha's teachings, the Buddha Dharma. May we gather this merit and share it, share the blessings of our life, of our practice, outward in all directions with all beings. May each one of us experience freedom from suffering. And together, may we create a positive change on this planet. See you next time I see you.